Hey everybody, before we get into this week's show, I want to make this little video for you as a YouTube exclusive. You see, I'm wearing this t-shirt right now, the Mothman West Virginia t-shirt. This is exclusive through the confessionals. We had these specially designed and we're doing one for every state. We're going to pick out a creepy legend type character from every state. We're going to make a t-shirt for that. So if you're interested in this West Virginia Mothman t-shirt or the three other designs we have, check it out at the website, theconfessionalspodcast.com slash store. Merkel Media. This was all circulating around the base that a giant had been killed, but no one was supposed to talk about it. I saw three long bony fingers reach up underneath the door, curl up to grab it, and then disappear. When he came over to me, dude, he slithered over to me. And this giant comes out of the cave, and they're all frozen. And he starts running and firing at this giant. But the giant moves. He's got a spear in one hand, and he's running really fast. And spears Dan and holds him up like this. Somebody else shoot him in the face, shoot him in the face. They basically decapitate him. Got closer, got closer, got closer. When he got about 15 yards away from me, I raised that 12 gauge, and I blow this head off. I feel something pulling at my leg, and I look over, and there are two small gray entities pulling at me. And they're literally, I'm getting pulled off the bed. I reach my hand into this bush, and I touch air. Couldn't breathe, and I couldn't move, because I know I'm seeing a monster. Yep. Welcome to the show, everybody. You're listening to The Confessionals. I'm your host, Tony Merkel. Thanks for being here. If you have a crazy, wild experience you want to share with me on the show, go ahead and shoot me an email. My email address is theconfessionals at theconfessionalspodcast.com. That's theconfessionals at theconfessionalspodcast.com. Or go to the website, theconfessionalspodcast.com. Hit the contact section and you can reach me that way as well. Either way works for me. Just get a hold of me. If you want more shows on a weekly basis, go to theconfessionalspodcast.com. Hit the join button and become a member because with that membership, you get a bonus show every Thursday right there on the website or the Castos app. Plus, you get the Tuesday shows ad free listening and any overflow overtime conversation we have. And today is one of those episodes where you're going to hear this episode. And then immediately after that, there is an overtime conversation available as well. So if that interests you, hit the confessionalspodcast.com and become a member to get access to all that exclusive content. Now, friends, We are talking about it again because it is a very serious thing. Prepare with the confessionals.com with inflation through the roof and even these storms coming through. I've been seeing people posting pictures online of bare shelves in the stores because of all the snow coming through the Northeast. People are panicking. And actually, I only heard that it's supposed to be two inches, but still the store shelves are bare. So if you want to make sure you and your family are good in case I'm wrong and it's a blizzard and you don't have any food at home, make sure you're prepared with prepare with theconfessionals.com. There you can get yourself emergency supply food and survival gear. The food will last you up to 25 years on the shelf. We're always running great deals. And with the survival gear as well, lots of great stuff waiting for you right there at preparewiththeconfessionals.com. Now, YouTube, we got some news, friends. Kind of. Go to The Confessionals on YouTube, hit subscribe, follow us there, hit the alarm bell button, and you can make sure you're notified then every time we post on the YouTube channel because the Dogman documentary is around the corner. Do I have a date? No, I do not have a date. But I was talking to the producers and they are winding down production as we speak. It should be almost produced complete within the next few weeks, I would say. And with that, we released a teaser video on the YouTube channel. Go ahead and check it out. It's The Confessionals on YouTube. We released a teaser video about a minute and a half of a little bit of a trailer, but it's not the official trailer. We're going to come out with an official trailer and we're going to release it right there on The Confessionals YouTube channel. So go over there, check it out, hit subscribe. Thank you very much. And while we're talking about Legion of Legends and the documentaries we're doing, hit up the Instagram account, Legion of Legends. That's 
Legion underscore of underscore legends. You can go ahead and follow us on there. We'll be posting all our pictures and videos right there on the Instagram account. Thank you very much for doing that. And before we get into today's episode, I want to kind of explain again, if you haven't heard yesterday's episode, it's called Reloaded. I'm going to start playing episodes from the archive on Reloaded Mondays. And so every Monday, I'm going to play an archive episode. We're going to call it TC Reloaded or something like that, but it's going to be a Reloaded episode right there waiting for you. And I thought this week would be a great week because we have Tony Rodriguez coming on the show today, and I played his original episode with me from episode 91 yesterday, Monday. So if you want to make sure that you're always up to date with refreshing your memory when it comes to episodes we played, we are going to start playing Reloaded episodes every Monday right there on the stream for everybody. So if you're like, man, and I remember hearing this one episode and I can't remember exactly which one it is, but they talked about this. I get those emails all the time. Bad news is I don't remember either, but the good news is we're going to start doing Reloaded Mondays, which means you have a good chance of hearing that episode again, jogging your memory like, oh, that's the one. Okay, now I can send it to my mom. So anyways, friends, that's what we're doing with Reloaded Mondays. It's going to be a Reloaded episode. I'm really excited about it. I thought it was a cool idea and we're going to start doing it every Monday. Now this week, we do have Tony Rodriguez coming on the show and he is from episode 91. He is the alien abducted time traveler and he comes back on for another conversation. This was a very general conversation. We didn't really have a specific way we wanted to go about doing this. So we had a general free-flowing conversation. And with that free-flowing conversation, we did say some things that I was thinking, I don't know if that should be mentioned on the show or not, because we originally recorded this to be a one episode kind of thing. But with what we were talking about in the second half, I just was kind of not totally sure if I should put that on YouTube or not. So we made this an overtime episode. So the first hour is right here public. And then the last 40 minutes of the conversation is right there for the overtime segment for members only. So with that said, let's get to Tony Rodriguez right now. All right, today we have a returning guest, the long anticipated, the prodigal son returns, Tony and Tony, how are you, man? <laughs> hey, I'm good, man. Um, good. I've been really, I've been staying busy, dude. I, I'm glad you're here. Um, so let me tell you something, man. I, uh, I, I'm uploading my archive of shows to YouTube, and I, I'm working through from like the newest to the oldest, and so I have like a hundred episodes to go, and I recently am hitting about a hunt episode a hundred, and I was skimming through what I had, and I was like, oh. Tony's going to be coming up here soon. I got to upload Tony Rodriguez to YouTube here. And I was like, I should have Tony Rodriguez back on the show because it was episode 91 and we're about to break 400. I mean, shoot, when this thing airs, maybe it will be episode 400. I don't know. So, oh. uh, you know, it's just one of those things where I was like, man, we, we got to reconnect and I'm glad you're here, man. Yeah, hey, I'm glad to be here. It's a uh... Very cool. I'm happy to see the success and how your um expand growth has done since we've talked, man. You're kick you're you're killing it. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. Uh it, it's been a long time, it's been a long journey. But uh listen, Tony, uh I think what we're gonna do today is I wanna give people maybe a refresher course as to who you are, uh, because there's a lot of new listeners that probably never listened to episode ninety one. And uh if they could be informed as to who this Tony Rodriguez is and why is Tony our Tony so excited to talk to this Tony. Uh, uh, and and let them know about that. But um, to give people like a, a maybe like a summary here before you get into it, uh, you and I connected years ago, uh, and I think it was shortly after you started talking about this stuff publicly. Uh, but you you were talking about the whole twenty and back situation where you have these memories of abduction and what happened during that abduction, and um, it, it kind of blew people's minds, man. And uh, if I know it's a long story, so we may not be able to get into uh, the whole thing, but if you could maybe give a, a summary, because I want to let the people know uh, also that uh, you are now podcasting, you have a book coming out. And so we want to find out what's happening with you now, but also some of the new things that are developing within this whole community of people who are uh, have been abducted and going through these things. Sure. Um, that's wow. That's a lot. I know. So, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, the, well, and it would, so I recently did a show. I did a, um, a t live talk in Detroit disclosure, uh, two weekends ago. And for the, it was the first time I did a live show where I asked people to raise hands in the audience. If they ever heard of my information before, if, who's heard of my story, I could show hands. 
and no, hardly anybody, like two people rose. There. I was like the whole, I was like, wow, I'm in front of an audience. that doesn't even, I said, how heard of a 20 in back? Nobody, the wow. same two people. I went, Oh, here we go. So this is kind of uh, uh it was a challenge. It's almost embarrassing to really talk about stuff. That's so far different from what people think about a UF UF in UFOlogy. Some people are at different levels because people have to come to UFOlogy to learn about it. So they learn one level and then they get put it on a shelf for a year and come back to UFOlogy. So it UFOlogy keeps going, right? And then the 20 and back stuff, the secret space program developments, a lot of people are just unaware. And so when you really explain that the military has access to take to work and the military has access and has contracts with extraterrestrials that who and it's hard to distinguish who's working for who use that technology to abduct people and use them in labor or or warfare or whatever else they want in throughout colonies in the solar system. And then they have the here's where you lose people when they have the technology to put people back. 20, you know, they live for 20 years and then they go back in time and they age regress the body and they have several processes and they put them back the same day, the same hour that they were taken in the same body after they lived 20 years and went back. So it's a mouthful. And it's when you explain to somebody that hears it for the first, I hate to be the first guy to explain it to somebody. I really do. I hate to be the first person to break that news sure. to somebody because they go like, they look at you and they go, no, what about, and then their questions come, but really uh, I'm not the only one talking about it. There's a great deal of information about it available, 20 and back secret space program, 20 year tour, or um, career return program. There's a lot of information about that stuff. Anybody can access and there's, I'm not the only one. I mean, there's been dozens of people that have been researched and came through credibly like myself that got researched by a professional researcher and turned, you know, turned up evidence. And there's, so there's been a lot. And then there's hundreds of people that haven't had that luxury of somebody proving part of their experience. Um, you know what I mean? Having proof tangible, tangibly. And so there's a, hundreds of people like that. They just haven't had that luxury. That doesn't mean nothing happened to them. It's just that they can't really speak about it. You know what I mean? I, I, on yeah. the same publicly. So anyhow, that's kind of the recap. I was taken, I was 10 years old. I got bumped into a program and went, lived on earth for, uh, seven eight years in black projects working for privately funded black government projects fringe government projects and then sold off to the secret to the military and put into space into the space colonies and then was on several different projects there like i'd work for a couple years and get retrained and ended up on series colony and working for the bulk of my time and then put back to being 10 years old again in 1982 and then got my memories back in 2015. Was that was that when we did that episode? Was it like six? I came, I went public in I think September of 16. I started, was when my first. Oh, then one. no, I mean because I started the podcast January of 2017, and we were at episode 91 when I when I interviewed you. So uh, you were at least new to 18, me. At least. I think it was like okay, so yeah, and you know it's funny. It's a, it's like I said, uh, it's a small. There's a lot of people that study ufology, and it's a like a small percentage of them really i i like to think it's a big percent have, have knowledge of the 20 and back program well i i would say that i think coming across your story was probably my most um extensive introduction to the topic uh i cool. i had i had talked to not talked to but uh heard other people talk about the idea of it things like that but i had never talked to somebody up to that point that was saying that, that this is what they've been through and I remember doing that interview and I, I, I felt like a fish out of water. I was like, I don't know what I'm supposed to ask here. You know, like, like I'm interested in a story and, and, and like I'm listening to you and stuff. And I'm just like, this is so like, have you ever have you ever been in a situation where you're taking so much information in that you have a hard time like organizing it in your head? Right. You need actually need to sleep on it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You need to hear it and wait a couple of days and then, and then hear yes. it again and sleep on it. That really, when you hear it, something that really changes everything, you know, that flat, something that, um, you know what I'm saying? Like credit, like, like legitimately changes your uh, reality, what reality is for you. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like you have a re certain, we have a reality. We live on the earth. It's like no, but no ETs come here and our government's good, great people. And they care about us and stuff. <laughs> we have all these never lie images. Yeah, we have that. We have that given to provided for us. And then when you hear somebody that comes along and goes, 
no, we don't No, And then this is else happened. And then five other people raise their hand and go, yeah, it happened to me too. And you know what I'm saying? When you can come with that, like a bunch of whistle, when a whistleblower comes along and tells you like, um, you know, it was radical to think about what was it? Snowden, the whistleblower saying that all the cell phones are always on, always yeah. listening. You know, that was like hard to swallow. And I had to sleep on that for a minute, but it's my information and other people that been in secret space program, their information is kind of the same thing. Like you, if you never heard about it, you got it, you, you go, Whoa, they are doing what, you know, like when you really look into the info and then a lot of the, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't a great time for me. And they're really, they really, there's a massive abuse of power mm -hmm. and they, in the name of, t of advancing the s technology for the species, that's the name that they do it, but they use slave labor and they treat people. There's a lot of abuse. There's a lot of crime that goes put in that is um, day to day life up there that we would consider high crimes. And then I, I say it, I say it loud and proud and I'll tell any, anybody that uh, all ET abductions, all ET contacts are felonies. It's a felony. They yes. show up in your room. They show up in your bedroom, bro. And when you're a kid, so our kids, pro, you know, there are thousands and thousands of kids that are, that come forward saying they had ET contact. And so that's also a high crime. You have to get permission. You get what I'm saying? Like a real ET that when they, when we really have a say or any kind of, or any kind of compassion from ET, extraterrestrial contact or even the secret government programs there's sometimes there's people that come in at night and take they would knock on the front door you get what i'm saying like an et that would fly up on somebody's car and then they take disappear and come back all of a sudden what happened we don't know then if it was legitimate for in our best interests they would knock on the front door right and say would you come with us please we'd like you to help us and you go, okay, you, but they don't do that. You're just people are abducted. It's a huge crime and it's across the board. And thousands of people have contacted me since I've been public thousands that said they remember bits and pieces of the same thing that I say. I, I'm so glad that that's the case. Uh, I, I think that there, there's a lot of people out there. So say somebody comes across my show that's been in your shoes. Uh, they may not feel comfortable talking to me, somebody who's never been through it, that talks to other people. And I'm fine talking to people, but it may not for them be, you know, how do I communicate this to somebody who's never really even been through it? They come across you and they're like, here's somebody that I can talk to. Um, and, and I view the same thing, man. Like, like it's kidnapping. I, I mean, how, how else can you... I mean, I didn't ask it's, to be taken. It's one of our highest crimes, especially when you talk about children. You know what I mean? It's one yeah. of our high, our culture has a set, you know what I'm saying? And other, and to be fair, ET cultures. So from my time that I remember ET cultures have a wide variety of morals that are much different than ours that are just as normal to them as we think that are, you know what I'm saying? Like their moral value. There are many moral things and people really. So, I mean, let's face, what do you think? Are we close to, you think disclosure is uh near? No, I, I, I mean, I, I, I I personally lean towards no. I, I don't think that the government doing like, listen, if the government's doing these things, do I think that they're going to tell me they're doing these things? No, I, I don't. I, I think that there was been a big fight over disclosure, you know, in the government, like, or whatever, the space worker, whoever, I don't know who, but the, you could tell that there was a fight that bubbled up to the surface. And disclosure is the main issue because that's the big, you know, elephant in the room that we're at a level of, we're at a level of technology where pretty soon somebody will be able to roll out a, some dude, some guys will get together and they can build. People have CNCs and laser cutters and computers. We have a lot of things that we never had, not even 10 years ago and in our garage and guys will be able to build something that can discover life out there and prove it without a shadow of doubt out of a garage. So now we're getting to that level of technology to where it's likely that they can't keep it hidden. You know, well, somebody will have a wide scale proof of life out there. So they have to disclose they have, you know, or kill us off and, um, or do something, you know what I'm saying? Like they, we're getting to the point where they can't keep it a secret any longer. How possible, They'd have to do something drastic. How possible could that be though, as a solution to kill everybody off like yourself? I mean, is that something that you think is feasible? You know, I'm, well, I mean, we don't have, we're not. It depends on who's in charge of us. Who It depends on the job that the people that are really running things, the corporate elite, the corporations, the whoever's at the top of the corporations really running the world. 
And so it depends on how good a job those people do at defending us because it's not up to us. We don't have the technology to even interfere with. We are people. That's the other thing is a lot of people think that we're advanced in certain ways that we're to have, you know, but our, the actual us driving around in our Chevy and our gas powered stuff, looking at television cable and internet at whatever it is, whatever our internet is at like one a half a gig a sec whatever it gets to it's lame and so against species that can fly through mountains and time travel and read your mind and make people paralyzed when they walk in the room this we're talking about this level of tech so it's not really up to us it's not a question if they wanted to kill us they could so somebody that's in charge of our elite whoever's in charge needs to do a job of defending us and and by proxy themselves themselves defending themselves and by proxy us you know that's that's what we got is in that plan but or disclose disclosure is more favorable really you know so we're not the first planet that got to where we are and then needed to just that they made contact and let everybody know that there's a galactic community or an intergalactic community so we're not the first time this has happened so they know exactly what's going to happen you know like when when they released the internet technology on the public, they knew exactly what was going to happen because they knew they knew what happened on other planets when that when it happened. You get what I mean? So they knew what to expect of society back then because the elite are in touch with these this level of of tech of and uh, reach of information. So, if that's the case, and you know, like you said, I mean, the, there's other. We're not the first planet to go through this. What do you think then would be holding back the disclosure from happening? I mean, do you think it's it's literally the powers that are in charge right now trying to hold on to control still or and they just they're not ready to, to join that community. They just want to hold on to their little it's like a it's like a kid on a playground that has his favorite swing. He's like, nope, it's mine. Nobody else is going to use it. You know, is it that or is there something more at play that I'm not thinking of? I want to high five you, man. That's the best question ever. So. <laughs> Well, there's a couple, there's a couple, uh, obvious ones. Number one, like I said, they've committed crimes. So in order to bring people up and train them and make them available to trade in the, say, let's just take the 20 year tour, the career return program. So it's perfectly legal to, it's perfectly legal in the United States to enslave somebody if they've been convicted of a crime. So if you were going to take somebody right out of their jail cell, which you probably had legal, they could privately own jail that they probably already have legal authority to go into and enslave that person, kidnap. If you went to someone's jail cell in the United States and kidnapped them and put them in a career return program and made them slave labor and then put them back in their jail cell for 30 minutes later and right and use that technology, it turns out it's perfectly legal. The 13th Amendment that freed the slaves said, um, no, there'll be no slavery unless convicted of a crime. They don't say what level of crime or anything. So it's perfectly legal to take it. And then all of a sudden, the United States has the largest prison population in the world. How did I so miss that's all. How did I miss? Like, this is <laughs> like, I'm, like, I'm somebody who uh, I love the Constitution. And and so, like, how did I how did I freaking well, miss this, this 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 thought process? I've never had this thought process go across my mind. Well, it's, I, you know, lived through it. So I would live through slave labor up there. And that's why I still, I have a second look. I'm, I went, wow, you don't say, I, I thought, what is the law for slavery now after the, and I went and read it and I went, wow. So what a coincidence that we have the largest prison population by far in the world, you know, and there are other countries that face it behave worse than the typical American, but that would get, get I'm not saying it's happening. I'm just saying it's legal if they were going to do that. So there's that there is um and in when you enslave somebody up there the mind control they use the soldiers get a a with the grain mind control to make them more effective and more be, totally obedient so that or you get what i'm saying like totally uh reliable on command they can command them and there's they instill other things we're talking about very advanced industrial grade hypnosis very advanced was, you know, and so that's how they do. And they have with the grain that makes the soldiers more confident and they fight better. But for the slaves, they use trauma-based mind control. 
And so to make them afraid so that you don't try to escape or try to lip, lip, give anybody any lip. So they, they take away your self-esteem and put you through trauma-based, great deal of trauma-based mind control. So that's, if when we look at that and, uh, you know, if we disclose and they look at these programs, that involves sexual abuse, that involves being tortured, that involves many bad things. We'll look at that and go, what? This is against the law. You guys need to go to jail. So to answer, to get back, sorry, long story, but to get back to your question of why they don't want to disclose is because heads are half must roll after a disclosure of what these programs, what the operate, what the day, day at the office has been for these guys that have had access to these programs. The heads were going to have to roll. They broke a lot of laws and they were not necessarily well, you know what I mean? Like they were in space, so they have their own laws. What's how's that gonna work when we find out there's a moon colony? Yeah. Are they are they can they not is it maritime? Is it like international waters or something? You know, like what is the law? And actually the Artemis Accords recently addressed that. So that's another what's one of those coincidences on that keep popping up in my um testimony. But for the whole pro subject matter is that the Artemis Accords really address slave labor in space. Corporate slave labor in space is also, uh, was it, it was slavery. It was slavery. They made it legal in space or, you know, like corporation, like corporates had their own kind of law where they could, in fact, like, I forget, I don't know if it was worded slavery, but there was a way that they could really abuse people and it'd be legal because it would not be on the earth. And they, the Artemis Accords, there's a lot of fine print about uh, labor in space. That's where they basically drew up the, the laws about it. So we'll see how that pans out. That's the space force and all that. That's all, you know, playing into it. The, the, the other things I was told pre pre disclosure that was holding us back from disclosure is that our energy systems are so far behind because we've been kept into the fuel system that e that for the, an intergalactic community to integrate with us, they don't even touch us until we have our energy consumption, our energy uh, infrastructure at a certain level of technology that is very that we just can't do overnight. And they're like, once once we do that, then we'll get our disclosure. Like that could be that could be literally the whole reason we're not disclosing is because we don't have the infrastructure to accommodate our guests to come down and plug in plug in their machine their UFO into the to get more power or whatever. You know, yeah, I'm in a I'm think, being metaphorically sure. there, but what I'm saying. Yeah, but do you think that uh, that is a big push as to why certain things are happening today politically, at least in the United think, States, that doesn't make, seem to make sense as far as pushing agendas that are is actually hurting us? Yeah, I think we just spent like three trillion bucks on some new power grids. Or there was the one trillion bill of the power grid in Texas and the South America, and then another one over power grids, and then they're they're getting rid of gas yeah and machines i mean they, but it's it's all about the power consumption exactly well that's what i mean that's a, co a a lovely coincidence that's really really is hopeful for me that they're not going to kill us that they're going to disclose because they're building this you know they're upgrading our power they're heading in that direction if they were going to if if it was a requirement for our power grid to be at a certain level of tech and we were going to head in that direction to make it so and that's exactly what we're doing. We're the spend the money. We're watching the money head in that direction right now. Follow the money. Well, the money just went trillions of dollars just went yeah. totally into power infrastructure for not only the United States, but like quite a quite a wide area. I think other places in the world to have their power grids and um, upgraded as well. So it's a global effort. And um, so that's a very positive. Okay, let's talk about a sponsor for today's show, a new sponsor. Friends, we talk about security on this show. We talk about home security, food security, survival security, and now we're talking about online security with Surfshark VPN. They keep your online identity safe by encrypting all the information sent between your device and the internet. This keeps your personal data protected from big companies or cyber criminals. Surfshark has 3,200 servers in 65 countries. You can access and unblock content libraries and streaming services from other countries like all of the Netflix libraries. And here's the most important part, friends. This is the thing that I love and I know you guys love too because most of the people that listen to this show are kind of in the similar thought process as me. You can bypass censorship. 
everywhere. Surfshark liberates your internet by unblocking blocked websites and bypassing geo restrictions. That's a huge thing for me. And I know it's a huge thing for a lot of people, especially people who are trying to, you know, research things and understand what's happening around the globe. Sometimes you need to be able to unblock certain websites that are blocked where you're located at. Now you can secure your online data as well. A VPN encrypts your online data and helps to secure your personal information when you use free public Wi-Fi, and that is a goldmine for hackers. They look for things like that. So you're going to protect yourself like that. Masking your IP address is essential to becoming private online. A VPN makes sure that your city, country, and download history aren't linked to your identity. Friends, having a VPN is huge, and Surfshark is huge as well, and that's why I'm really glad they're here. Be sure to go to surfshark.deals confessionals and use my code confessionals to get... 83% off plus three extra months for free. That's a great deal, friends. 83% off plus three free months when you go to surfshark.deals slash confessionals and use my code confessionals. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of talk about the, the uh, power grid and how weak the power grid is right now. And then uh, we have some bizarre decisions made uh, that you you sit back and you look at. And I understand people have their opinions when it comes to like energy and fossil fuels and all that stuff. Uh, throw, throw that out the window. Just throw it out the window for your opinions and how you feel about things. Uh, the way it's been done is almost like they're trying to uh, deplete us of fossil fuels in our reserves and things like that, almost as if to put us in a position where we have to do something else. It seems like that's kind of what's been happening with decision making, uh, canceling the the Keystone Pipeline, and then uh, deciding to tap into the reserves, which will only last like two days. Like, wh- what is the point of that? It doesn't it doesn't make any logical sense unless they're trying to implement a whole new system by getting rid of the old system. Like, there's just nothing left. Maybe along those lines, but uh, we've. The Trans-Pacific Trade Agreement is something that I've followed a lot. And it's like, I don't work talking about politics now, but what is something that happened that I I think very few people understand the mechanism of the Trans-Pacific Trade Agreement of what it really is to what it really means to um, people in America. And that's basically why our shelves are bare and where everything's going and why the prices of everything is skyrocketing. Because the first few rounds of money that they passed with the COVID relief, Right as soon as you know Biden took office, they okayed the Trans-Pacific Trade Agreement, which Obama had left off on, and Trump immediately canceled his first day in office. Um, they came on, but Biden gave it a green light, and they were waiting. They had been waiting for those last four years. They were ready. So what that basically does is it says that we are subsidizing all of the countries around the Pacific Rim, like Malaysia and Vietnam and uh, there's a bunch in there and, and China that we are subsidizing our pro- our produce like our lumber and produce are we're subsidizing our products to go there so even though it's more expensive to manufacture here because we're in our certain level and it's cheaper there we they can't afford it and we pay the difference so if they can only afford a five dollar sheet of lumber and it costs ten dollars in America we sell it to them we give it to them and they pay five dollars, and America, out of the relief money, pays the other five dollars of to the. That's where all our stuff is going, mm. and it's going to be years of that because they are they are upgrading their building. It's a huge. It's NAFTA. If NAFTA was a firecracker, this is a nuclear bomb. Is of the same exact thing of outsourcing, and it, so uh, like most most of the countries are getting like a forty percent pop in their forty or fifty percent pop in their local economy because of the Trans Pacific Trade Agreement. The United States over the next 20 years is only supposed to get 5% economical growth out of it, out of the trans, you know what I mean? Like that's, anyhow, well, I'm getting sidetracked. It's not it's, UFOs, is it? it but it's the reason, it's where we're at right now. It, it, we're it building all, it up all the third world. It all relates. You know, I, I, yes. it, and that's the, thing, that's the thing. I mean, it, it's not political. It, it's It's taking what's happening in our world today, which unfortunately you can't sneeze without making it political these days. Uh, you, you, so we're just talking about what's literally happening in t- today's world and how that attributes to what we're talking about here with your own personal experience. So I don't view it as getting political whatsoever. Um, like I, I don't care what people think. I don't care who people vote for. Go do what you want to do with your life. I don't freaking care. Like I do. So when I got my memories back, so I'll go back to my story. So I got my memories back in 2015 
and I was left wondering what the hell was happening to me. Uh, I really, I really wanted some other reason to kind of cut me free of it. Like I kept trying to find a reason for it to be some other thing that was other than me remembering actual things. You get what I mean? Like maybe it was, yeah. maybe if I go here and prove it wrong, if I go here, I remember that this place was here and I remember the car was blue. And if I can go to this place and find that, that it's there and it's not, the car is not blue and the place is different, then I can prove it wrong. I can move on. I can quit. I can quit worrying about it because it was a dream or something. And then what happens is I go there and the car is blue and exactly how it is. So, and it's over and over and over again, it keeps happening. So because of that, I started studying the things I remember to, to research it. And I think that's why I've got a weird look on how our local current events. I have a kind of a weird perspective because of my own, you know, one, like, like the, like the constitution, like I read the constitution with, from that angle, because I remembered that slavery was up there. And if it was, you know, that was the same kind of thing. Religion was the other thing. The other thing I um, really researched that was disappointing to, to pan out was the ritual human sacrifice. The, that was a global um, culture. It was global. Everybody in the globe did it. I didn't know. I didn't know that, but I was researching the history, like why these people do that, why the elite are doing that. And um, there's quite a bit of history there. It was kind of disappointing to see what, what it is, what it is it was what it was and how it is right yeah and and that it's it it's a dark history that man has uh from pretty much any angle you want to take it you know uh if you look back in the history of your country or your human society in general it's dark there's a lot of people who were were in charge of, play, of things who made bad decisions did bad things and that's from your history books to your biblical books to everything in between uh it, it, their history's filled with regrets right so <laughs> uh that's the way i look at it. now um let me ask you a, a question here you know we were talking about uh, or you were you were mentioning about some of your experiences and i was i was making rapid fire notes uh and i want to i want to start off with this one part here did you suggest that not only are ets abducting people but actual people are coming into people's homes and abducting them in the middle of the night kind of thing oh yeah where black programs have advanced alien technology many black programs and i'm talking about like you know elite special forces they have access to anti-grav craft they have access to um sleep technology they have access to you know they can see right through the house they can you know they have access to the same technology that ets use to abduct people in my abduct in my abduction experience, they followed up. The military followed up, or excuse me, that's that's uh, I can't say military or not. Humans followed up. I was abducted again by humans a few weeks after my initial abduction by ETs. I was taken by the, you know, I call it the cabal programs. You know, the 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 Orion group programs that was um, dealing with probably the CIA and local um, or American elite billionaire people that were probably had access to CIA programs. Um, I was taken by them and then sold into, a, into the space colonies, into those militaries and then traded from one to another a couple of times. And, um, but definitely after that, I came back a military, uh, a human group pulled, got me and they had, they had tech to make me remotely make me get up out of bed and sleepwalk right into their van out in my driveway. Wow. So they had tech, they had that technology. And so if they have that, then, you know, they run the gambit. And the other thing is after, so I, you know, this is uh, kind of wild, but after I came public, I think the emails were right before my first interview that I believe I was taken and interrogated by a, um, in a, uh, like the air force, um, secret space program like in, on that level and they they took me and interrogated me and put me right back the same it was the same technology they time dilated me so they took me and they interrogated me for like 18 hours and they put me back and i woke up the next morning like what the hell just happened why and it was it, it was only the nighttime had passed so i got sleep and everything what what's the point of that i mean are, are, are they aware that you remember more like obviously now but I mean, they, leading up to that, were they, do you think they had some ability to understand some people are waking up to the, with the memories or what? 
Well, I think that pe- researchers that I was dealing with at the time had their emails under surveillance. Gotcha. And they, so they came and got me to question me. And they asked me the same story over and over. I was like, I remember being kind of zonked out of it. Like, you know, they gave me something and I was like zonked. But I remember it was the same thing over and over again. And I was being super cooperative. And it was like two guys doing the good cop, bad cop thing where one of them would be cool once in a while. And the other one was like aggressive. And they kept asking me the same questions over and over and over again, you know, and I was like, dude, I'm telling you the same thing. And it was like, seriously, like 18 hours straight of it. And then they put me back. So um, if they have technology to make you sleep, walk out of your house into the, into the van, and that's how the abduction can happen. Uh, I'm sure you've heard of like voice to skull technology. What what are your thoughts on that? As far as like can, like um, Isaac Cappy, uh, before he he killed himself, uh, he he was talking about how he was hearing voices in his head, and everybody around him was saying that uh, he's just he's losing, it. he's crazy, he's talking about all these these elite pedophiles, and now he's hearing voices. But then he's in uh, the car, I think in Arizona, with a friend, and his friend was driving. And they both were hearing voices in their head at the same time. So at that point, she was like, oh, he's not crazy. And there and there's some kind of technology going on. Have you ever heard of such things? Oh, yeah. It's very real. Um, it's mechanical. We called it mechanical telepathy on series colony. It's a very real thing. And, um, you know, I've talked to people that have said they've had it, but I've followed up with them. Like people have told, talked to me and said that, you know, they're a targeted person and they get the voice, they hear the voices and stuff. I'm like follow up with them and it's they they usually don't want to keep talking about it so but i believe it's very real it's a very real technology for sure it's something and the vice versa they can listen to what you're thinking too you know they can which is right like the ultimate paranoid conspiracy thing to say publicly sure. yeah you know what i'm saying to generate people that have paranoid behavior um but i'm saying that they had that that that's the ability as well so i don't know what it would entail or what you know like what kind of tech they would do but that's definitely something that's in the realm of possibility it existed in the space in the secret space colonies when i was up there so um i i don't think it's too hard to fathom when you break it down into terms that we are more familiar with so we know there's algorithms that are real and we know that our phones have predictive qualities to them where you know it learns our habits and all of a sudden things that we we need or we think we need or we want all of a sudden starts popping up on our phone without us even searching for it. It's like, oh, it's that time, you know, it just knew. And so if they have technology that can just predict your behaviors to the point that they know what you're thinking or know what you are going to think at a certain point in the day, of course, they have technology that could actually read your minds. I mean, when you look at what what uh, Elon Musk is doing with Neuralink and the technology he's he's working on there, I mean, it's not a stretch whatsoever. And if they're doing that publicly now, just imagine what they have privately. And I, I've, t- I've said this before on the show. I, I uh, when I was driving truck, I was doing a delivery to a guy who owned a, a casket place. He sold caskets, and uh, he said to me that, and he didn't know who I was. We just got in this conversation. I have a I guess I'm good at pulling this kind of stuff out of people, but um, he 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 were we were talking about his time in the military, and he said back in the '60s he was an engineer in the military, and he said the technology that we have today he was working on back then, or they had back then, and so it's it, it's it, there's a very big gap between what we have access to and what they have access to, and your story just kind of backs that whole thing up. Right. Well, thanks. Um... Yeah, it's very true. And the thing, I, your cell phone does way more than you can even imagine. The, the The amount of mind control, the the level of of technology behind that. So there are uh, I've been made aware that there are not only when you look at your cell phone, you say it's like the uh, the NSA is is listening, and they can you know they can word search all your stuff. It's listening to, but there are other programs that are above the NSA that they're unaware of that have access to the same data and can actually manipulate it. And when you talk about big tech, it's quite obvious. You know, nobody can argue that big tech is all working together. It's basically one entity that all of the website, all of the media is basically one entity. They're all on the same page with agendas that are flying in the face of what people, a lot of people nowadays are going, huh? 
and because and they're all on the same page by pushing the agenda. So whatever it is, what you know, I don't want to talk myself off off of the internet, but <laughs> or me. it's obvious, <laughs> right? It's obvious that it's one, it or it's one or two. You know, and they're very close, and they're all on the same page. Somehow they they shouldn't be. We believe they shouldn't be. So, but there are levels above them that are actually ET level. So, and not only you could not only get one or two groups of ETs, you could get hundred of different ETs with all different agendas that are accessing that information. They have wow. the ability to come down and snoop on that tech and access all that info. So, and then the ones that actually are working with big tech openly can input things. So with, with the mechanism to listen to everything, big tech also has a mechanism to program what you see next. And so that's like, is a huge thing that's intake. It's really impacting our kids. When you look at the younger generation, they're really, really affected by their social. We didn't have it, right? I don't know how old you look like a young guy. Uh, 36. So it came out when I was, uh, Facebook came out when I was in college, but I didn't get it till I was married. So yeah. what, when did you get, how, when did you get your first smartphone? Uh, actually I did get my first sm smartphone, uh, in, I, I want to say it was probably like 2006 or five. I, I, uh, it was the Motorola Q, which was, it, it, it had internet, it had, but it was so slow and crappy. It wasn't a touch screen or anything like that. Yeah. It was cheesy back then. So you're already yeah. an adult though. So when you, the phone that's in your pocket today, you're already an adult. Your, your opinion, your morals are made up. Your willpower is made up. Your opinions are made up already and firmly entrenched in your psyche. The kids nowadays, all of their opinions, all that stuff is fed to them by that fucking phone. Excuse yeah, me, my language, but right. by the, you can't stop the phone from, from children. I regret, I have raised my daughters. I regret giving them internet access at a young age. I wish I would have waited till they were 15 or 16, even really? though that was probably not possible. It was probably not possible. They wanted it so bad. All their friends had it and everything, but it changed them. I watched their personalities. You know what I'm saying? Be a, be influenced by the internet. You could see it. And you know, if you're close with your kids, I mean, anybody can see it, but it really changed them and continues to, to this day, it influences them. And these are people, you know, your kids, you know, better than anybody and me too. So you, I I'm thinking, no, it hasn't influenced me at all. It's, I'm still the same guy, but I, we have a better chance because we grew up without it to, but to see kids that that's been their whole, that's been the gospel to them the whole time. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it's been the their fault. So when something changes in the media, they, they change and you, and now, you know, we have a different kind of a guide. We kind of have a, like I said, we have a basis without the influence of big tech and media. So we're all different. We, we have a foundation uh, that, it, that, that was laid in place before the internet was put on top of that foundation. Whereas the kids today, their foundation it, it is the internet. I mean, is like, the internet. Uh, it, th that's their root makeup. And so all the information they get, the who they are, what they're going to do, all comes from the internet. Uh, and if the internet changes something and moves a different direction, so do the kids. That's it. I mean, they, they just, they, they navigate. Whereas I think our, gen but even our generations and stuff are, are changing too because I mean how many times did like like I'm 36 and I can't tell you how many times I see people in their 50s 60s year 60 year year old uh, and and they're they're acting like they're in their 20s the way they're they're letting their decisions how they're making their decisions I mean at some point you gotta start saying okay we 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 gotta stop making decisions based off of our emotions and, and it seems like there's a regression here and I I I, I feel like it's because technology people are so stuck in their phones and stuff that the, it, it 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 does control you it brainwashes you it gets you it, it seeps into your consciousness where um you start acting the way they want you to act not the way you probably should be acting yeah i think there's a lot of influence to worry about so we'll see we, our kids are the first generation that are growing up in it we'll see what their kids are like That's what crazy. they've learned from it when they raise their next generation of people that are you know, it's a hundred percent of, of influence like that. So we'll see. How, how do you I, I, uh, go ahead? I'm sorry. I was going to say, I think overall it's more positive than negative. I really, I think that I'd rather see a mankind with that's in touch with each other because w even if it's turbulent, even if times are, you know, even if it's a negative influence now over time, we'll adapt to the neg and, and we'll have the ability to, you know, I think it's a better thing that people have access to information and each other.
each other is the, the best info. Yeah, coming from uh, your perspective and what you've been through and what you've seen and stuff, I can see how you come to that conclusion because you've you've been exposed to other civilizations and uh, advanced technologies and seeing what those advanced technologies have done for those civilizations. Um, for somebody like me on my side of it, I'm just like... Some of it, I just want to throw back into the the bottomless pit, you know, and and just let it let it rot there. Uh, but at the same time, I mean, like I I, I owe technology a, a huge debt of gratitude for just where I'm at in my own life. You know, if it wasn't for the technology that we have access to, the people wouldn't know who I am. They wouldn't. I wouldn't have a show, you know, and and all that stuff. So I mean, it's like a catch twenty two with me and stuff. It's like I hate it, but I also love it. You know, I need it, but I hate it. So. <laughs> I'm in that transition, you know, like it's, it's that transition. Like maybe you're like, right. The next generation won't be having the same struggles that I have right now with technology. They're just like, it is part of my foundation. Yeah. We'll adapt. We'll adapt to it as a, but I will say this about, so, you know, I don't think about it when we're just shooting the breeze like this, cause there are a couple of guys, but when you yeah. say you remind me of my time in space and how tech, how I've seen it, I'll tell you this, that, that brought something to mind was that everybody, all of the, even the government, even the military people on Ceres Colony and Mars Colony, everybody had um, advanced civilizations that we aspire to, that we that we were in awe of. There are civilizations out there, there are beings out there that have such a command of their environment and um, technology. They have technology that's so, so far advanced of what they had that we know we know that there is. Uh, virtual paradises of existence for beings and they have their own problems they have their own problem they did not want to interact with us most of the time but they did from time to time but we were very aware that there were very advanced beings that not only had higher technology but were mentally much more advanced than than we are Okay, it's time for our last sponsor today, which is HelloFresh. And say hello to good food. You guys know I like eating food. I've said it enough, but I really do. I enjoy a good meal, and HelloFresh offers me the best food for less. You see, you're going to save about 72% than your traditional trip to a restaurant. You're going to save about $65 on your monthly grocery bill when you order HelloFresh. HelloFresh offers you great food for a great price. The food comes straight from the farm to your front door when you want it to on scheduled notice. So what does that mean for you? It means you skip the grocery store. You don't have to worry about waiting in those lines. You don't have to worry about walking through the grocery store and saying, they don't got what we need. It's already on the way to your house. By the time you get home, it's going to be sitting on your front door. Don't wait any longer if you've been holding out on HelloFresh because HelloFresh is that good. Hey, and listen, we're in the beginning of the year. People are having New Year resolutions. Some people want to lose weight. Hello Fresh. Some people want to save money. Hello Fresh. Some people want to learn how to cook. Hello Fresh. You can do it all with Hello Fresh. And right now, for my listeners, go to HelloFresh.com slash confessional16. You know what that means. And use code confessional16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. That's go to HelloFresh.com slash confessional16 and use code confessional16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. I'm telling you, friends, they're feeding you for a long time for free. Go get your HelloFresh right now. They classified uh, the Ceres Colony Corporation with the, the Deutsch that were in charge there from uh, World War II, you know, German Europe. Uh, Deutsch, they were Germans, basically the bad guys. They classified uh, life forms by the amount of words they could speak. And so we're at like 100, 200,000 or something. And so that's our the human. And then they had like a meta, the next, I forget the ult, ultra human, uber human, meta human. And anyhow, meta? after you got up, there was something like that. Like, um, like Facebook's meta? No, like, like a <laughs> way, like a, like three tiers above. Well, the next one. I, I, the reason why I make I say that like tongue in cheek because I was going to ask you: Is Mark Zuckerberg an alien? Because he looks he looks like he could be one of those those big tech alien guys. You know, you know what I want to say. You know what I want to say. So I'm going to say that I don't know. I don't want to say anything. Get myself in hot water talking about Zuck. Yeah. But to me, it looks like his personality completely changed. I think he got. 
I think he got taken and put it through his own trauma-based mind control. I can see it. There's times when him, when you see a thousand yard stare, he looks like a school shooter. And I hate using those for, I hate using those strong words, but there's times he has that thousand yard stare. looks like he's not even in his, he's not even home in there. And so he would be somebody, he's very powerful. It would be a government, a government player who has access to mind control technology, which is not new. They've been doing the Manchurian candidate for a long time. I got to point fingers, but it's obvious. And could that's somebody that you would want to take in mind, mind break, mind fracture, and then mind control them. All yeah. of the, all of the corporate guys could be like that. And that's what I smell on when I see Mark Zuckerberg and talking publicly, it's like, he's, it's like, there's nobody home in there. No. So is he, and he wasn't like that when Facebook took off, he was very bright and flam, he not flamboyant, but what's the word? Charismatic. He was a, he was a charismatic, charismatic and colorful person. And he turned into a gray person. Yeah. Is, you know what I'm saying? And that's like, that's what mind control does. That's what trauma based mind control does to somebody. So that's my own personal observant, right? I'm not going on the record here, but I'm saying that's my personal opinion. That's what it looks like. But I don't know, Mar- I don't know him and I don't follow any of his interviews or anything like that. I don't. Yeah, I mean, me neither and stuff. But when you say such things, uh, it, it, it does have, you know, a very much kanye west type vibe where kanye west you you see him staring off into space and he just seems very distant his his character has changed immensely over the years to the point that people say he's crazy uh and all this stuff and i mean uh, i'm not a big fan of the guy i think there's a lot of shady stuff that goes on within these industries and music industry hollywood obviously uh the things that you've been through and have seen but um it, it you know it does seem like they're two different people and what has changed you know could it be that it's simply the pressure of running these kind of organizations just sucks the life out of you maybe but given what we've been talking about and how you've mentioned about in these the higher you go into these organizations and stuff that there's actual interaction where there's et working within these organizations and making decisions it's also it, a lot, when you're thinking along those lines, it's really not that hard to make that connection. Yeah, there is a level of society in the world. And these are people that have, have are very elite people and it could Hollywood definitely, but the, as Hollywood don't, you know, kind of don't get me started on them, but there's a level of people that have um, access to the space, to space, to intergalactic you know, programs, I, I call them programs, but I'm saying that culture to the intergalactic cultures, people have access to it. And so they, and they're doing stuff on the earth under with that kind of influence. So they're way ahead and the mind control, the trauma based mind control, you know, I'm not going out far on a limb. There's plenty of evidence. Go research it. It's, oh yeah. It's, it's one of those things that people go, yeah, I don't think so. But it's like, you know, they've been at it for a long time, a very, very long time. The and only they're reason, very good at it. The only reason why somebody would say, yeah, I don't think so is because you didn't, I don't, I don't think you looked into it because if you actually looked yes. into it and you actually read documents from the news. government <laughs> spelling it out for you, they, they admit they've done this. When you have the president of the United States apologizing for MK ultra programming, you, you can't say, yeah, I don't think so. You know, right. <laughs> at some point you're like, okay, I guess you're right. Yeah. We're all under so. mind control. So think about this sure. when So, so, Right, you're younger than me. So, but you, when you were young, there was still not the violence. Remember, remember, uh, you know, on cable TV, it was like, or even on television, they all had like, like, uh, more, more sexuality. And now it's all violence. Like, literally, I can turn on my TV and in 30 seconds flip through channels and watch somebody get murdered, really. And in almost any form of television of yeah. of tele, you know what i'm saying any form of entertainment now it's like violent because that's a form of mind control that what that does is that the, and your subconscious doesn't know the difference of your violence you're watching is real or not and over time because of the long pro, you know you prolong that your your subconscious actually shell shock the result is that it makes people think that they're helpless if you watch a lot of violence you have an underlying feeling of helplessness and you look at all these people you know what i'm saying that we're, we're not talking, we're talking about more stuff. We're talking about politics again, but people, you know, people feel helpless. Like they, people stay, live at home with their parents much longer than they ever did. And it's the, it's, it's a form of mind control. It's a, you know, it keeps yeah. people docile and not feeling like they can manipulate, not feeling like they can manifest whatever they want. And when you watch the violence on TV, that's the, the end result is it'll kill what your, your desire is to man, to manifest, to work for what you want. Cause you feel hopeless. 
they they it, it's they there's desensitiz- desensitization for sure when you look at uh tv programs that were produced just late 90s early 2000s like if you go back and watch them, like oh yeah that was such a good show let me check that out and all of a sudden you look at you're like this is corny this is why <laughs> this this isn't this doesn't even look real why did i ever think this was good and it's because they've always been upping the bar upping the bar to de- desensitize and get you closer to this this idea of maybe what's really actually happening around us and stuff so that when it starts really seeping into right in front of your face for real it's not that surprising you know i don't know uh yeah, maybe yeah, I just get I there's times when I set out there's nights where I set out to watch TV or something, you know, and I got a prime and all Netflix and all that stuff. And a lot quite a bit of quite a bit of entertainment available. And I can't find anything that's not violent. Yeah. Like I look for it and it's very hard. It's very hard to find a good a good nonviolent show. Let me ask you about this. So you we're talking about TV shows, the violence, and you said you had Netflix, right? Mm, yeah, the kids for the kids. Okay. Well, I don't I watch it, but I watch it, but very rarely. So I, I don't watch a ton of TV, but whenever I do, uh, the only reason why I have cable is because I like watching the Sixers play basketball. Uh, that's that's the only reason why. Uh, I, I whenever whenever I watch a TV show, it's usually on Netflix, and whenever I go to Netflix, the algorithm knows me. They know it knows m- what I like. I get a lot of um, satanic uh, witchcraft type shows that come to me on, on suggested TV shows. And I watch them because uh, it's kind of what I do. I, I, I look into this kind of stuff and I'm, I'm very interested in it. And I'm also interested in how Hollywood puts this kind of stuff into our, our psyche at, because it's actually going on and all that kind of stuff. What are your thoughts on on these kind of TV shows then? Do you think that it's more real than fake? Because I personally do. Some of the things that I see in these TV shows, I'm like, I know 95% of the people watching this right now think this is a well-written TV show and, and, and it's, it's, it's all fantasy. And I'm sitting here thinking, I've talked to way too many people who've gone through this exact thing to know otherwise. There, there you can start to see a slipping, like, you can start to see the beginning of it, of them trying to normalize that society. We're talking about a society of satanic worshiping elites, carnivore Pedophilia. people that are pedophiles. Exactly. And there really is. There's, we're starting to see, it, you know what I mean? Not not so fast. because Se- Sexualizing uh, high schoolers in TV shows is very absolutely. popular right now. Absolutely. And the normalizing pedophilia. Yes. Normalizing. We're starting to see a little bit not not a great not a great push but we're starting to see just little sprinkles here and there like well is it really bad you know like they come out and there's people that are trying to say ways to deal with it and what they're doing is they're getting they're getting it out there and they're going to slowly try to normalize their own behave horrible behavior and then so we've already seen our society change in the last few years from what we thought it was to what it is now and yeah. so when we see these kind of changes where are, are people going to draw the line or are people going to accept it? Like I, I, I would say that the diversity of life throughout the cosmos, if we're talking about a post-disclosure world, people are going to be appalled. If, if we disclosed right now and, and you could access the intergalactic internet and speak to ETs and chat rooms and look at their movies, watch their videos, if you could watch an ET TikTok, you would be appalled by some of them because their behavior because their cultural and moral standards are different than ours because we've been programmed under a lot of them or a lot of our morals are just control mechanisms but throughout the cosmos different control mechanisms are necessary and that was my understanding was that many et races behave in ways that we would consider horrible uh you know i don't i don't really have a ton of examples to give you you know off the top of my head but like some some are more violent some are more that more loose about uh possessions so they'll just take your stuff and not feel bad about it some are sexually different that we would consider perverted and so there has to be some kind of you know because our our morals really when you go into like a full-on whatever religion that you know the top religions in the world right now if you fully follow them the morals are very strict and so an et might scare might be you know what i mean like might we if we have racism now think about a hyper form of speciesism that's takes the form of, of racism because of 
moral standards that are that are incompatible. And that's going to happen, you know, in a post-disclosure world. And so we're starting to see some of that. And I'm not trying to give the satanic, like you said, the Nate, the Netflix, the satanic elite, I'm not trying to give them a pass and say that, you know, we have to accept it for what it is, because right. clearly a, a child's right needs to be prese- preserved. Like our right to be have our door knocked on and participate in an ET interaction, not taken out of our bedroom and not taken as a child without the parent. You know what I'm saying? Like though our we have rights that need to be defended in the coming year, coming decades. We're gonna have rights that are gonna have to be well defined that have not been respected by our elite and by ET races that are manipulating our elite. And so that's kind of a big deal. Like you said, the net, the I see the I see the programming like on your identity. Like I see the programming trying to normalize things that we should not normalize. Uh, and I feel like I feel like a lot of things are going in a great in a good direction. Um, I think our next generation of kids. And I watch my young my kids that are in their early twenties and their late teens. They're very more. Um, what's the word accepting, you know what I'm saying? Like l- not as closed minded about cultural things as my generation was told to be. So, and I see it as a positive step. I see it. I see they're manipulated. They're totally like hook, line and sinker being t- led around by the establishment. But I see a lot of the older overall thinking of, of acceptance of things. They're far more acceptant than we were at, uh, you know, when I, I'm, I'm going to be 50 in a couple months. So I was born in 72. So i grew up through the eighties and 90s and so it was a different culture man you know back then so i'm seeing we're seeing positive things but they're good careful they're going to try to put things they're going to try to normalize things that shouldn't be as well so it's it's kind of like a line and time will tell yeah i mean it's it for me it's a i'm a black per i I just found this out i'm a black pill person I, i i didn't even know what a black pill was until recently um there's the red pill and then there's the black pill, which is you're red pilled, but you're so red pilled that you feel like there's no hope. And that's that's what I tend to be very pessimistic. And so uh, it, I'm sure you've probably gotten that vibe from me just talking to me and stuff. I'm just like, not at all. Uh, I, I'm just like, I, I, I see issues and I ha- and I, my mind all automatically starts doing the domino effect of seeing, OK, if this is happening now. What's the next step that they're going to do down, 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 down. And that's why I'm just like. You know, I, I get kind of emotional at times where it's like um, talk about charismatic. I get pretty loud sometimes. <laughs> but um, anyways, I, I, I have I have the similar opinion as you. I think there are some good things and some bad things. Um, but I, I definitely think that if if they are have if they have any kind of inkling of manipulation on the future generation, I th- I personally lean towards ultimately, I think it's just going to be bad in the sense of individuality. Because it, if the, if the if the future generations are manipulated at all, it's not like these organizations or these whoever they are is going to relinquish any of that, and so they're just going to continue doing it to the point where these future generations are manipulated into everything uh, that they want to be manipulated into. And there's no individuality. There is no what do I think. It's just what does the hive think. I don't like that idea, but maybe I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. I got two kids. I have a three-year-old, a four-year-old, and a one-year-old. I don't. I want to be wrong on this. I really do. Sure. Yeah, I, I would imagine. I'm ever hopeful. Like I said, so you know, this goes back to like a, that culture when I said that they really aspired that we were aware that there were more advanced beings that had solved all the problems that we're thinking about, and we got. I I have to personally just remain hopeful that mankind is heading in that direction. That in a few million years, we're going to be so advanced that none of this is going to matter. Do you get what I mean? Like as we're, that we're going to keep advancing and keep advancing. And this is, these are like growth pains, what we're going through. Like the hive, if the, if there was a hive mind, then sooner or later a humanity, yeah, I have faith in humanity that they would figure it out and shake it off and keep advancing. You get what I'm saying? Like, I feel like our growth can't be stopped. And so no matter what bad thing happens to us, mankind will grow. And eventually get to that point where uh, these beings were very advanced. They could manipulate things with their minds, like change items. They could change, you know what I mean? Uh, your cup into a ball or a flower. They could manipulate reality. Really? And the, they were very advanced. They were very advanced and they were very long living and they were people. So, you know, 
it, like I said, the scale went on numbers of, of words that a being could could speak. And after a certain level, it wasn't words anymore. It was like millions of words worth of data that they communicate uh, to each other and to other beings. So when if you met one, the the communication would be a great deal of information in a very short time, years of information, years of your memories versus years of their memories in just a few moments in a conversation. And that's the level of, of consciousness that you know, we aspire, we should aspire to be, but that's another part of the illusion is we've been told that we're the top of the food chain and that's it. And you know what I mean? Like, you're just going to be a good person and be reborn. And, you know, like the religions say that you're the top of the food chain and that's not the truth. There are many other, there are many other steps in, in consciousness in in the growth of our consciousness. That's going to have to happen that are, that are worth looking forward to that. If we knew about it would give us faith. It would get rid of the black pill altogether. You'd get rid of the black pill because you would have faith in in what's happening in the process, and, you know, trusting the process. Even though the bad guys win the battle, they don't win the war. And it's all about growth. And like I said, you know, I like to think about it like, you know, a seed, you plant a seed and you put a sidewalk over it and the seed comes growing up through the sidewalk. You know, it's it doesn't stop. It, the growth is far more powerful than... But what about, what 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 if... I mean, there there has to be civilizations civilizations out there then that that did they failed in the process and they didn't advance to another level, right? I mean, yeah, it, like, I'm like sure certainly there has to be some kind of civilization civilization out there was just like they were just stupid and they just, they don't <laughs> exist anymore. Could that be us? Many, yes, probably many. But we, I, you know, now we're well, now we're getting now we're getting real philosophical. Sure. Is I got to think that we're all we're all kind of part of the you know we're not just on our own on the earth right so that if all humans died off that our consciousness would would move somewhere where we could thrive move mm-hmm. somewhere else and that's kind of the that's kind of the gist of what we're seeing going on right there right now is you know um and i hate to point fingers and say good guy or bad guy but that the the winds are blowing that they people they want to have public space programs that go to near the Mars and the moon and start branching out and, and, and putting mankind up there publicly. And that is a disclosure. And so those are steps to bring us up to speed to where we're not. Um, so that if ETs do contact us and they do have a full ET disclosure, the general populace can understand what they're talking about when we already have a foothold in space. You know, most people, there's a lot of people that have a shocking amount of ignorance about space and nature. In fact, nature that you live, your situation that you live in right now, our situation that we live on right now is in space. The nature expense extends far beyond the sky. And very, uh, very many people are ignorant of really what space is, is consists of. And they think it's just a, a small thing up there and that the whole world is everything. And, and really it's a popular, you ask people a lot of rudimentary space questions and they don't, you get a lot of dumb answers. Sorry. Sorry, people. Well, that's the show, everybody. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you did enjoy it, please share the show with your friends. I don't care where or how you share the show. Just share the show if you enjoyed it, because that's the best thing you can do to help the show grow. Share the show. And if you're on YouTube, don't forget to give me a thumbs up and a happy comment in the comment section if you enjoyed it. Hey, if you hated the show, give it a thumbs down and a bad comment in the comment section. I don't care either way. It works for me. And until next week, friends, stay safe, take care, and remember, the truth will set you free. But first, it'll piss you off. Bye. Uh, very many people are ignorant of really what space is, is consist of. And they think it's just a, a small thing up there and that the whole world is everything. And, and really it's a popular, you ask people a lot of rudimentary space questions and they don't, you get a lot of dumb answers. Sorry. Sorry, people. No, I mean, I, I think that's, I, I would expect that to be honest with you. I mean, it, like space, even on the collective conscious level is so, I mean, relatively new in the sense of you know how long people have been looking to space as somewhere where you can go but also uh the seriousness of it when it comes to like you know space force i mean that that was like when that came out it's like everybody's like what you know like what do we need a space force for and i'm thinking tony rodriguez tony rodriguez (laughs) (laughs) you thought about me cool (laughs) i'm like he said this stuff uh but yeah listen um we were talking about a bunch of stuff in the beginning and uh like I, I could go on and on here 
Um, but you did mention something to me before we started recording that I, I did want to talk about because you mentioned it. And that was uh, what's happening with people that are coming forward now. Uh, and, and I guess, I forget the term you use, but I guess there's something that's happening with people in their memories or something like that. So it's flattering that the, it seems to be that there is a disinformation campaign about the 20 and I could call it 20 and back. These are, you know, phrases. It's not exactly what it is. Yeah. The ufology of secret space programs, people that are taken into these programs and do, you know, a career return or the 20 and back. Um, that are taken and then put back the same night. So there's a lot of people that are coming forward now, but it's flattering that there is an, clearly a disinformation campaign going on. So I've done talks in Vegas recently, in Detroit, uh, I did uh, Mount Shasta, went to California. I'm going in May to St. Louis to space program conference. Um, and we're starting to see disinformation really happen. So, I mean, like in the last few years, like really just go to take off and that's flattering because you're on somebody's radar if they got to spend money and effort to try to do that but we're starting to see people that are coming forward that have no memories at all they're saying i'm saying you know guys come up go yeah i was this i was that i was super soldier and i'm like well what do you remember what do you tell me about something you remember like i don't remember anything Hey, thanks for watching The Confessionals on YouTube. If you like what you heard, hit the subscribe button, hit the share button, and hit the like button. That would be a great help to me. And if you want more of The Confessionals on a weekly basis, every Thursday I come out with a special show just for members on my website. So if you want to check that out, go to theconfessionalspodcast.com, hit the join button, and become a member today. And every Thursday, you'll get a new show, and you can binge on previous shows, which there's almost a 100 of them. So if you love the show, go ahead and check it out. But thank you very much for being here on YouTube and checking out the channel.